introducing our guest speaker today, uh, Alvaro Salgado. Alvaro is a product security engineer for a Fortune 500 Bay Area company. He has multiple years of experience performing penetration tests, security assessments, and design evaluations against different technologies. Uh, if everyone can please join me in welcoming to the stage, Mr. Alvaro Salgato. Good morning, Chelco. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we will be speaking about Siesta Time, a red team framework for the generation of implants, infrastructure, and reporting. Um, first of all, um, I would love to introduce myself. My name is Alvaro, and I am from, from Seville, uh, a small city in the south of Spain where it's really hot, and actually there is a lot of teeth <laughs> orange everywhere <laughs> in the streets. It is full of like orange trees. I have performed my studies there in Europe, and I did my OCC certification. And since then, I have the, the great opportunity to be here in the US working for a big CRM company as a product security engineer for the last three years, where I have learned plenty of uh, techniques for like apps and security, designs, automation. Speaking about what I like and I don't, uh, technically, I, I love very complex problems. I like this, this you know, technical challenge where I need to follow a little bit the white rabbit, did I wall, I learn something new. I also enjoy my free time with my friends without any kind of schedules of times. But on the other hand, I, I don't enjoy as much scratch security, business logic, design level kind of things. Uh, and also I, when, when I go out or whatever, I don't like to have a big, a, a strict schedule. I, I love to take my time, eat it slowly, sleep my siestas. Um, I also want, want to say I, I am delighted to be here in Shellcom. I, I did this similar presentation in the Red Team Village in Defcom. So for some of you that already go over this slide, it's gonna be really similar. Um, so let's go ahead and speak about the reason of this framework project I'm gonna present. So uh, while in my personal career, I have been performing a lot of uh, asset security um, and designs and automation. In my free time, now is better, yeah? Okay, just in case. In my free time, I have, I have been um, working a lot in, in looking about offensive security projects, readouts. I have been looking a lot about techniques. And, ah, yeah, that was the echo. Yeah, perfect, thank you. And, and while I was doing all these studies, um, I discovered that one of the parts that I think is more important when we do a red team engagement is the generation of implants and infrastructure. Like that time take a lot of, that, that part take a lot of time. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start to code something. I'm gonna start to develop some tools that could like, be helpful on these steps. And this, this process, alongside with my knowledge of high-level language and like web services, arrived with the, with the idea of kind of a central, central web server or centralized framework that could help with these purposes. A lot of you will say, okay, this is not new. There is ideas already around there, and that's true. There is a lot of tools that red teams can use, like one of the most famous Cobalt Drive for Windows system. We have like handles like Empire, we have, we have Metasploit, we have Sliver, we have um, Merlin, Covenant, a lot of them. But with this idea, I wanted to glue a little bit everything to make the process a little bit easier. So with this, with, with this idea on, on the mind, I want to like a little bit enumerate which kind of like problems a red team could have when he's gonna perform an engagement, right? Let's imagine we are hired by a company or a client and we have a limited quantity of time, right? So we have a lot of tasks to perform. One of them, you, most of you, you will know that it's like, you know, we need to gather a lot of information of the target and victims device, but also we will need to start to prepare the infrastructure. There is a lot of red teams over there that they have, they already have a big infra infrastructure made, but sometimes we need to change things. We need to start to register like accounts for Amazon, Azure, lineage, we're gonna start to need to register domains, credentials, API keys, we're gonna start maybe to register some accounts. We may need to use some service as a service account for doing exfiltration and we're gonna save all that for the operation. In the meantime, we're gonna also have people that are gonna start to install, install some server, maybe phishing servers, maybe DNS C2s, maybe HTTP C2s, and all of these sometimes protected by Redirector. So most of the red teams are gonna try to like copy an architecture similar to this one, right? We're gonna have all, all like prepared servers with the rep rep respective bunch of redirector with the domains, more redirector, you want that implant or that like in, in, that, that server be more protected, less if we think that that service is gonna go down fast, right? 
Also, we will arrive to one point where we need to develop some kind of software, a software that is gonna be running in the, in the, in the victim's machines and we call an implant, right? There is, as I told before, there is a lot of implants already over there. We could use maybe an empire. We can use maybe a Metasploit compilation. But sometimes, and most of the time, I will say that this is not, en not enough. We need people that know a little bit of system programming, maybe C and Go, that will can like change thing of this existing implant. Maybe the aggression is not gonna be easy. Maybe we cannot use, use like SSH for the aggression. Maybe we need to, to, to use HTTP or HTTPS. Maybe we were lucky enough that we discovered that there is a, a bunch of defensive technologies already installing the device that we want to, to, to inspect, right? Maybe we, we know they are using this brand of EDR, or maybe we know we are, we are using this kind of antivirus or host intrusion detection system. So we know we need to change some part of implant that instead of maybe just sending code directly to an interpreter of the bash of CMD, we need to, to use some libraries, APIs, or syscall for doing this complex task. Or last but not least, we may need to compile for different platforms, maybe Go, maybe, maybe OS X, maybe Windows, maybe Linux, right? And this will require, re require time, and we could save this quantity of time for the most basic implant set, right? Also, let's imagine that we, we already have our foothold, we have already inspected the internal company, everything is going great. We may need now to create some kind of server or technique that will require time for maybe exfiltrate a big quantity of data. Or maybe we have done an amazing job and the client or the blue team is saying, okay guys, this video is amazing. You, uh, we, have, we have not seen you guys at all. The implant has been running very silent. Could you make now a little bit of noise in, inside of internal network so we can learn a little bit about this? And yeah, let's, let's not forget about the thing about the reporting. How many red team maybe could be very efficient or nobody have forget to report those commands they run in that production server and when the production server magically crash, right? We will have, we will love to have all of that correctly documenting per operator per using and per time so we can do a really efficient reporting and give that to the defender. So all these, these problems gather into the ideas of why we cannot have a tool that define an architecture for red team infrastructure that is efficient. Why we cannot have some kind of implant modularity in what we are developing and we could save in some open source repository what we are using as efficient so all the red team can like use them. And why we cannot have a graphical user interface that we can do all this fast because I only honestly think that click saves time nowadays. All this with the object of helping red teams. Let's not forget that like uh, red teamers are to like make blue teams to catch up and be more efficient. And like, if we think about this tool as a being very offensive and helpful for attackers, that's true. But also it's true that real bad actors, they will have these tools and better of them. And they will not be shared with, with, they will not be shared with the community. So the ultimate objective of this tool is helping Blue Team in the last instance. So let's get a little bit technical and let's start to speak of what is going on, what I have developed, I want to share with you guys. So I want to start speaking a little bit about the component. Uh, the main component is a web server in Go called Hive. Hive is the operation server. So if you have a, this, this architecture I was showing before about the redirects and the, and the servers that you manually deploy into Amazon or Lineage, uh, Hive will be the server that is doing all this that an operator will do manually. Then we have the operators themselves that they will connect, we, will connect with a client to Hive and will send jobs to Hive. Hive will like process those jobs and do different actions. Then when we deploy the implant, we generate the implant, we will have both the redirectors and the bichito compiled, that is the main implant of Sista time. So we call infect the host. And then we may use in the future staging server because sending, having an implant that is very resilient and slow in an infected device cannot be the most efficient way to like pr proceed with lateral movement and other post-exploitation tasks. So we we'll need to maybe create a staging servers. And I'm gonna show all this slowly through schemas and demos. So let's go with the, this, this first components, Hive and operators. Um, we will have the Hive in the Amazon server and then we have a client Go binary and electron graphical user interface. Uh, but the best way to understand how this is going on, I would like to show directly my schema here. So let's say we have the manager of the red team. He, he will have his like bash script for install the Hive with the Amazon credential and everything. And Hive will be deployed in the, in the Amazon lineage or whatever. Then we will have the SQLite database and a Hive running as a service there. After that, 
who will say to our operators, okay, guy, I have added you as an operator one, I have added you in the database as an operator two, please compile your binaries with the domain of the hive, with the TLS fingerprint of the hive, so you can you have your client go binary there, and then once the operator wants to start working, he will trigger his client go in his machine. The client go, we use basic authentication through HTTPS, and we say to Hive, send me all the information, please, so if I can feed my electron graphical user interface, and the operator through the electron graphical user interface, we send different jobs, like creating implants, or like send this command to this infected host, or like interacting with this staging server that we will need to. Speaking about the database itself, I'm gonna be fast here, uh, there is a bunch of basic objects besides SQL in one. We have the implants with all the JSON string with the configuration of the different implants. We will have three objects that will represent all the registered batteries that we can have for deploying infrastructure, virtual private clouds, domains, and software as a service. For the moment, for pri pri virtual private clouds, I just have, Azure, I, I just have uh, Amazon, but I will have Azure and Linux in the future. For domains, it's working with Kodadi. And for software as a service, I will show you later, it's using Gmail APIs. Then we will have all the jobs where we're executing with the output of failures and the staging server with the configuration as well. <coughs> so let's, let's speak about the main function of Siesta Time that is generating implants. How this work? So when I go to my, to my when I run my client go and I, I see my electron graphical user interface, I will be speaking about the red things when I start to register domains. It's gonna start to register different accounts of Amazon, di different accounts of Lineage. We're gonna have a good battery there. We're gonna get prepared because we're gonna need to perform a speed infrastructure, right? When we create the implant, we're gonna choose the different modules. We're gonna choose the different aggression methods. We're gonna choose how, ma how, much, how much time the implants are gonna live. And then we're gonna add all the redirector we want with the credentials that we previously saved. And things are gonna look a little bit like this. So the operator is gonna say, okay, chief red teamer, we're gonna like create this implant, we're gonna use this redirector, I'm gonna send that job to Hive. Hive is gonna process this job and the first thing it's gonna do is, okay, I have this module, this configuration for these domains, I'm gonna send that through the JSON string into the compilation of the implant and by using Go, I could compile that implant in OS X, Linux, and Windows. In the same way, Hive is gonna say, okay, I need to have this bunch of redirectors running in Amazon, in Linux, or whatever, so he's gonna use all the strings to create a Terraform plan. He's gonna save the Terraform plan in a folder, and then he's gonna trigger Terraform binary to like deploy into the target instance all the redirector. And what we're gonna do next, somehow, that I will explain later, we will get to infect this computer inside the, the, the network of the company we want to attack, and then the Vichito or implant is gonna start to try to connect to the, ref, the different redirectors or domains. If the blue thing busts a domain, there is no problem. The Vichito is gonna attach to the next redirector. If it busts the next redirector, there is no problem because we will be able, by using our previous safe credentials, to run more redirectors. So in this way, the implant is gonna stay there till, I don't know, they burn the computer or something. Uh, yeah, let's go with the first demo because I want to show you, at last after speaking a lot of time about uh, Siesta Time, I want to show you Siesta Time itself working. So, and please stop me if you don't see something. Um, this is the, the main graphical interface in Go. There is different sections, if you can catch to see at left. The first one say operation servers, and it has for the moment hives. That list over here, is the jobs that uh, Hive is, is, is have executed on the past. In the left part side, you see there is an ID that is ta attached to the operator, and then you have a job ID, a time, and the success of the job or not. Some of them, they will say here, for example, say create VPS, that means I have add a new Amazon credentials, and the last one send the lead VPC because I have used the lead one, right? So we have the implants, the list of the implants, and the function to generate implant I'm gonna show later. And then we have the register battery that I will show you how you can add different Amazon accounts and domains. And then I will talk later about the staging server and the reporting. So I'm gonna show, I'm showing, I'm listing here all the Amazon server I already have list, but I'm gonna show you how I can add one Amazon instance, right? And let's see we have an Amazon account and I want to add a particular um, AMI region. And for that to work, Siesta Time will need to receive the key name 
an SSH key that we have generated in Amazon alongside with the access key and the secret key of that Amazon account. I want to show here what happens when I click add. So uh, the electron graphical user interface is gonna send the JSON parameters into client go, and client go is gonna send that to Hive, and Hive is gonna process this, it's gonna add it automatically like a normal web server to the database. So I will have list the next Amazon account or whatever VPC account I want to add. And you will see in the jobs that it, the, job is, the job is gonna be performed, but the interesting part is I'm gonna be able to see which operator did that because maybe, I don't know, maybe we have some operator that is not doing things right and we want to see that in the job. So here is the, is the generation of implants. I can choose the name of the implant. I can choose the time to die of the implant. I can choose the beginning back of the implant and then it will have, it will have a bunch of uh, section for the modules. Right now you can just choose the network module, but in the future, you could, you could choose like persistent module, you could choose maybe like some kind of like execution, execution of code module, maybe launch itself obfuscation module. And in the last part, you could, you could choose to add different redirectors. If you can see more or less there, each redirector we have two sections where we can choose the VPC, that means where we want to like run the server itself, like Amazon, Linux, whatever. And in a right, we will choose the domain. For the moment, it just support domains, not subdomains, but I will add, add the subdomains as well. Once we choose the domain, we can just like create the implant and then it will go and follow up with all the process I have told to you. Uh, when we use a domain, that domain will be used. So CS that time automatically we switch out that domain to be unable to use it for more infrastructure because it will like kind of collapse with other like staging server or redirects of what that will be generating. So, while this is processing, I'm gonna show you, I have a SSH connection to Hive and I want to show you different parts of the folder of Siesta Time. We have shared the database, .db, that's SQL Elite. We have the Hive binary, we have the service of binary running in the Linux server, and we have the different folders. One of the, the main folders is implants, where we can list all the implants we have created. I want to show you what is inside the implants so you understand more or less how this works. You can see the implants that are compiled for the different architectures and operating system platform that is most used in most of the companies, right? And then we have the redirector binary and the keys for the redirector. And inside the infrastructure folder, we can see we have the Terraform binary, the keys, and we have the Terraform plan. So Hive is gonna be using the binary for deploying all this automatically. <coughs> uh, I want to show now a little bit what's what, what, what all this looks in Amazon, right? This is my Amazon dummy account for Siesta Time, and we see we, I have the Hive running there, and I have the redirector one, we just choose running with the domain and the network control stime1.yacita. And in a different region, I have the redirector two. This means that in a kind of a fast quantity of time, I can make a deployment of a redirector in a bunch of like different servers and regions, so in case maybe the blue team of my company say to Amazon, eh, I think they're attacking my from China. It's okay, because you can have one from Spain, another from Turkey, from different companies, and then you are gonna have a lot of diversity to your implant in a very short quantity of time. So let's follow up. Uh, a lot of you, you are gonna ask, oh, okay, Alvaro, this is cool, I have my implant, but now what? Okay, I, everything looks very nice in the graphical user interface, but I need to attack somehow, right? I need to do useful things. I need to follow up with the, with the attack, with the operation itself. So for that, we have the, what I, I like to call staging servers. So staging servers are gonna support the, the, the funny part of the operation. They're gonna help, help us to spread the infection. They're gonna help us to, for post-exploitation uh, mm, objectives, right? right? Right now, I have three, three kinds of them. I have the droplet and I have Metasploit 100 and Empire 100. The droplet, droplet is a web server where we can drop there the, the implant that we choose. And the Empire and Metasploit, we help us to pop new faster shell so we can use them for like more long post-exploitable session. And those staging servers are not very valuable to us because while blue team, the staging server is gonna attach the attention of the blue team, we are still we're gonna be able to have our implant running slowly in a job-based console kind of. So this is how we look the, the staging server deployment. So in the same way, the operator is gonna say, okay, I have my implant, let's, let's create a droplet because I want to use an USB key to attack a computer and drop that, that implant from the internet. So I will send a job to deploy this droplet and Hive will use like with Terraform deploy a web server. 
then let's see I have infected the computer of my target. It's in, in the Invicito is, is running and is sending jobs to the redirectors. And now say, okay, I want to, to run Mimikatz. I want to like use some like uh, binaries that are using Meta Explorer and Py. I want to use Sliver, whatever. Okay, I am gonna send this job. I'm gonna deploy with this domain, this Meta Explorer handler or this Empire handler. I'm gonna send a job to Vichito saying, okay, inject me this Empire shell, connect to my to my Empire, and then what you, you're gonna be asking is like, how the operator interact with this staging server? The way how interact is Hive, when he's deploying the staging server, is gonna create a remote tunneling service through those staging server to Hive. So operator will never, never, never interact with the service that can be attacked by the blue team of the company. It's gonna interact directly with Hive. In that sense, it may be the, def the defenders take down a staging server, they are gonna have any fingerprint from the attackers, and they could discover maybe, hey, this is the red thing attacking us. We don't want that, right? So this will be done by Hive and remote tunneling. I'm gonna show you guys that right now. So let's go ahead, um, let's create our staging server. This is gonna be the droplet, and the same way when I am creating the redirector, I'm gonna choose a VPC and a domain, and I'm gonna choose any other parameters like the port where the web server is gonna be listening, or the folder where I want to drop all my implants. Then let's go, let's create the Empire handler, the re respective port, and let's, let's create also the Metasploit handler. This take a time, like an average of five or 10 minutes because Hive need to run a lot of a script in the, in the target server. Remember that this will, will be like what a red teamer will be doing manually, but this is being done by Terraform and Shell scripts. So it will take an average of five, 10 minutes. I have put the video. So right now we can see directly in a browser how these three, three domains I have chosen for the staging server and are already working. This is the, the droplet. It's just a Ubuntu Apache server. This is already the Empire handler working. And I want to show you how I have signed the certificate. You use this third bot and let's, let's encrypt. So uh, we can use in the future other models for with if we want other like uh, signatures, but like for the moment it's working with let's encrypt. This is the Metasploit handler. And let's, let's right now, I'm gonna do the first thing that I will do if I have already my implant, right? Let's, let's go to attacks that for the moment have just like a drop implant and in the future I put the HTA for Windows. Uh, let's, let's, let's choose the droplet and let's choose which architecture and like operating system we want to attack. Let's put a, a name and when we click perform the attack, hi, we just send that implant to the droplet. So we, can, we could use later on for the infection. In the, in the meantime, I want to show you in the same way that I showed the, the folder implants, I want to show how the staging uh, folder works. So inside hi, for per each staging I'm creating a folder and inside each folder I have similarly what I have in the implant. I have the Terraform binary, the plans, the script for like install and remove Empire or like Metasploit, the sliver in the future or whatever. <coughs> and I also I have in Hive a service running with the remote SSH tunnel I was speaking about. So the SSH is open in the Hive itself in staying the staging server so the operators with the binary go, they can connect directly to it with the graphical user interface. So let's go now and let's try, let's try now to imitate what will be like an operation and an attack of an operator, right? Let's say that somehow the operator has realized that they cannot fish the company and they want, they want just to go physically to the company to infect device, right? So they're gonna maybe with the USB key or maybe they're gonna just go typing in the computer that is unlocked. We know that unlock computers in companies that are not good for anyone, right? And then I will have my droplet. I will download my, the implant that they have already deployed with just a time. I will go to the terminal, for example, of a Linux OS, or OS X machine, and we will go ahead. I will run the implant. Now I have the debug debugging active in the implant, so we can see what's going on. First thing the implant is gonna do after persisting and getting all the information, is gonna try to connect to ST time one X what do Zeta, and that port I select the indication on the implant, is gonna generate its own ID, and it's gonna use a token that is a hash that was registered in the creation of the implant. Right now this module is using authorization header, but they could change this as much as I like, how I'm gonna show later on. So let's go to the graphical interface back and let's start to interact with infect, infect, infectation, right? This will be totally transparent to the, to the operator. The operator will just go to the implant and we start to list. And you're gonna see that in the top, Bichito chain from zero to one, that means we have one infect host and we can go ahead and interact with it. ST time is the host name of the infected device. And here we can see all the information that Bichito has compiled, have gathered in the first compilation, execution, sorry. And now 
let's just run some command. The only problem with the Vichito meterpreter is right now it's really slow. It's similar to the Empire one is, is working like by just sending jobs. I have a basic, basic job right now that is exec and right now it's not very silent because it's using bash but I'm changing all this for syscall so it's more silent against the EDR that exists around there. And we can see we have in the infected device a lot of like, we have the error log and the job log and just going by the job log we can see in a minute the output of this command that I need to organize a little bit but it will be done in, in a bunch of months. Um, <clears throat> I want to test now what happens if the blue team detects our first domain, right? What happens if I say, hey, ST time one, what was that? I don't want anyone like resolving that name. It's, it doesn't look nice. So I'm going to imitate that by, by my Amazon account killing that redirector. I just kill my redirector, it's stopping, and Town Beach is going to say, hey, what's going on here? I cannot connect. I cannot connect twice. I cannot connect three times. I cannot connect four times. There is a problem. I will go to my parameter array and I will connect to the next redirector that is already up. So he will be working perfectly, silent over there. The operator will not realize about anything, but he could look to the error log and say, hey, what's happened there? My implant is not connecting anymore to the first domain. They may have coached my first domain. I don't know, but it, I don't care because it's still working. I have my second domain working. So I will just run another command and everything will be going on. A lot of you are saying, okay, Alvaro, this is cool, but it's, it's, it's really slow. I cannot do a lateral movement here. I cannot do a post-exploitation job around here. It's, it's so slow. I may, I may do it, but it's gonna take time. There is no problem. Thus, do you remember the Empire, Empire handler we had before? Let's go in our handler set. Let's go to Empire and say, okay, let's interact with my Empire handler. And it's gonna pair over the inner terminal. Binary, the client, of, the binary client of the operator is gonna perform a SSH connection to the hive in the port that was remote tunneling, and it's gonna pop up the Empire handler. That is what the thing is gonna do, it's gonna do a rep tier into the, that process of the staging server through SSH. So I'm gonna have over there in my graphical user interface the Empire handler. So now I just need to go to the infected uh, Bichito and say, okay, let's inject an Empire shellcode, let's select the, the staging server of the Empire one, and let's send this whole payload through the job base console so we can create a new process in the infected device and now we can perform more like hardcore post-exploitation process without having our implant to be detected at all. Bichito is gonna, is gonna stay there maybe forever, <laughs> but like we're gonna have our agent there for doing whatever nasty things we want and if they catch the Empire shell call, that's okay, we will just kill the staging server and there is no any problem. I want to show here as fast I can just like interact with this agent, as fast I can just kill the console, that there is no any problem. Since I am using Reptil to catch the process and this, all these handles are running as a services, it's not a problem. This is gonna no, it's not gonna never crash. And I'm gonna be able really fast to change for, for example, the Empire to the Metasploit handler without any problem. I think now we need Metasploit. I just will need to inject Metasploit through the job console and we will have the Metasploit running over there. So this is everything with the staging. Uh, but in this research and this project, even if there is a lot of use case and bugs I need to fix yet, I was saying, okay, oh well, this is the flow of Vichito. If you are interested into it, I, I forgot about this. Um, so Vichito, as I told, the first thing we'll do is persistence, then we'll gather all the information on the infected device. Then we'll try to connect to the reference redirectors. If he cannot connect, connect in TTO seconds time, he will kill himself and remove the infestation. If he can, he will just like query all the jobs and execute all the commands I have been showing you guys. So I was like, okay, I want to move further ahead. These modules, they're nice, they're aggressing through each HTTPS, but like, what happened if, what is the limit of aggression, right? I don't need to have HTTPS. There is a lot of like companies over there that are hitting for us a free C2, like Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, all of them that are providing for us a free C2. So why just not to send a string to like, for example, the Gmail API, you see the, the email draft for like sending or payloads and just like do the same thing that we are doing in HTTPS and redirect to transparently by you using tokens of different components that are hitting for free all this service. I want to say in terms of Red C2, hit me one string and you will be my C2. And that's what is going on here. So let's, let's show this. Let's go back and let's do the same thing, right? We're creating an implant. This time the implant is gonna call Gmail one. We're gonna put the same parameter for the implant, like time to die, decoding time time. But now, instead of choosing a bunch of Amazon server, 
there's no need of that. Now the redirectors, they're not going to be the different Amazon on each server. They're going to be the Gmail account themselves. Because both the redirector server and the Vichito are going to be polling into Gmail saying, hey, I have something funny things to execute in this infected machine or not. So now the blue team is going to need to, well, DPI into those strings, or maybe it's going to need to say to Google, hey, this account is, is, not, is not doing something, I mean, it's not doing something nice against me. Let's drop that implant. Let's download now the Gmail implant. And we're going to see that in the same way I'm executing, in, instead of connecting to the redirectors, it's going to be doing something fun. It's going to be saying, oh, you know, draft something. There is not nothing in draft. This draft account is, is, is null, whatever. So what's, what's, what's is going on here is the Gmail bi binary now has the parameters and tokens for connecting to the API of Google. And he's just like querying draft because of in the way I have designed this is now the whole payload is going to be saved in the draft of the email list and the ID of the Vichito is going to be the subject. And a lot of you guys that work in Blue Team and stuff like this are going to say, ah, it's going to be easy. I just install DPI in, in looking inside the, the payload or draft that they are being sending. That's okay. I can use a stenography on image if you, if you, if you guys like. Next module. And, uh, it, that I will speak about that word in the future, but as you can see there, this, this were my two Gmail accounts, and this say in drafts is null. That means that it's working. We, because when it's null, it's word, it's, it means that the redirector and the bichito is getting all the information. You have a big blob there, and it's a stack. It's because something is not going on well. So let's go back and let's do transparently the same we did before, but using Gmail. Let's just send commands to the infected device. <coughs> With all the information, everything is exactly the same. The operator is not going to realize about what's going on because this is transparently. Let's send some commands. OK, I'm going to do a little bit faster. Let's send another command. And now the only problem is because now the job is being sent first to Hive, Hive to the redirector, redirector to Gmail servers, then the Vichito is pulling that job. This is going slow. But again, there is no problem. If it's going slow, we just want to persist here. Let's use again the Empire Handler for doing any post exploitation process we want. So let's go, let's interact with our uh, Empire. Again, and let's say, okay, I have that agent from the, from the previous POC. It's okay, let's go, let's select our Empire Handler, let's send the shell code, and then the whole shell code of Empire is gonna be through the draft of Gmail. Vichito is going to take that draft. It's going to create a new Python process with Empire Shell. And it's going to create a new agent by doing the same similar way, but just with a different network model. So now we're doing everything with a different aggression. That's all. Here we will have the agents. And we will receive right now the agent through Gmail, do exactly the same, and without any manual configuration or your team of operators. So we will, we, they, could, they could spend time doing most important things on the future. So that's everything of the funny side, but still we are losing a very important part, reporting. I know that like, that's not the funniest part, okay, but like it's necessary because all this is to help defenders again. And I'm gonna show really fast how reporting one in Siesta time. It needs a lot of work, but the, the essence is there. Okay, so let's go, let's create and report in ST time. Do you remember we have done plenty of things? We have added a lot of accounts. We have uh, created implants. We have created staging. Worse of all, we have been interacting with some servers over there, running a lot of crazy commands that no one's know like, oh yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell to my red team manager, I'm gonna run like, I'm gonna, you know, SH rate something I did not do exactly here well, he's not gonna realize whatever, right? I'm gonna put some, some commands there in my Empire Handler. How this works is like everything is gonna be record per session, per time, and per operator. And how this works is because when I deploy the staging servers, the binaries that are gonna be running as a service like Empire Handler, Sliver Handler, Cobalt Strike, whatever, every output of those, uh, of those frameworks, they're gonna be writing a log file, and each time that an operator connects to that staging server, the log file is gonna be cut, and they're gonna say, okay, here is start the session of this operator. And everything's gonna be safe in the database. In that way, each time that my manager wants to see what's going on, he's gonna create a report. He's gonna download that report, and we're gonna be able to see right now what is in, in that text file. 
Right now it's very simple. I want to change all this to XML to be a little bit more beautiful, but the essence is there. I just need to change the format. So we can see here that the uh, echo GG, this will not be recorded, Escheret, whatever, is there. And it's per time and per user. The only user is admin right now. And we have everything I have been doing in the interactive session is over there. And in, in the future we have more options, but also we'll save all the jobs and every error log and everything. So we can track when like the blue team canary hit me and I react to that. And in that way we can study all the actions and reaction between the blue team and red team and we could learn about that, right? So that's the reporting and everything so far. Um, future work is sad to say, but I think this is the biggest part of the tool. <laughs> like, there is a lot of security bugs. There is a lot of performance bugs. There is a lot of native function from the implant to, to, be, to be like changed. Right now, I don't think the implant is being cut for any place, but it's going to be soon. I need to add obfuscation. I need to add a lot of modules. I need to add a lot of new kill chains, a lot of staying server. Not to speak about persistent. I need to add a lot of kind of persistent. I'm going to research about like, you know, TLS thing and print of the blue team because if we're now using a Go client to aggress to a Gmail account, that doesn't look nice. So I may need to use a headless browser or headless like Chrome to do the aggression and that will be a new model so it can be more silent. So there is a lot of work and I am welcome to hear the ideas of anyone and to help me out with Go to perform this task. This is every, everything. Thank you so much. I'm very proud to be in Shellcon. Uh, Call for commits. I also want to thank, be very thankful for previous ideas similar to this. Red Team, Red Team are giving some information, open source over there. And particularly, a lot of love to go land system developer that put those amazing snippets of coding stack overflow. And let's not forget that this is for Herb Defender, that is the final goal of our Red Team. That's everything. The repository is online. Um, questions? Hello. So I liked all the redirector resilience. If a redirector goes down, you can switch to another one. How do you coordinate the redirector lookup? Is that built into the binary or? Yeah, it's, it, uh, it's passed like an array into the compilation of Golang, let like to put variable on compilation. So it's passed through a JSON and an array and it's just like systematically switching from one, one to other inside the array. If they run out of redirector, we switch back to the first one till he cannot connect again to any redirector and he will kill himself. Right now, killing himself is you killing the process, but I'm gonna add SH, SH, SH raid into the persistent. I'm gonna put random bytes into it so blue team cannot detect where the implant was persistent if we need to kill it. So no other questions? All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank today. you.